Hello, welcome back. Always glad to have you. Moving on with stained glass. So, as you can see, everything's cut. And now comes the fun part of wrapping with foil. So I'm grabbing a piece. This is the um, particular brand. The one reason I like this brand. Oh, I don't want to use this one. It's not black line. Shoot. Problem. Grab this other bag. Oh, poopies, where did I put it? So we're gonna wrap things with foil, which is a copper-based foil. Now I'm gonna to have to go buy more foil. Um, and this one, see how it says black-coated foil? So, it literally means the inside edge is black. And so when you do the glass and the leading, which will be solder. It, um, I do a patina that is black. And so that black edge, then when you look inside, when you see the, from the edge, so this is gonna be black and then the inside is also black. So it all looks the same. That'll become much more apparent later in the game. So I take the first piece I'm going to spray a little bit of Windex because, you know, there's a dusty edge, so you want to make sure you get this from the grinding process. That's really the clean I'm worried about right now because when the thing is all done, I'll be cleaning yet again. There's so many, so many steps to this all. But then we just get this started, which, you know, is always fun. Sorry, it's going to take a minute. Because my thumbnails have been broken down from doing the glass. Arg. There we go. You know, and this is just a... One of the dogs just stuck his head in. And then ran out, and here comes another dog, but you won't get to see him. <laughs> Sorry. Arg. But I wanted to do this, wrap this first one on camera for you, just so when we go to the time lapse, you'll get a sense of just what you're watching. And so the goal is here to have it evenly distributed on each side. Now, George is scratching because he wants to go back into the house. So I, in, um, was it 97? 97 and 98, I built this studio that I'm working in. And I'm sure you've seen videos of, hopefully. There are some of the studio tours, the interior. But I built this space just um, behind the house, sort of creating this patio courtyard between the house and the studio. And when I say I built, the only thing I didn't do was um, dig the footer and set the block. But from the slab on up, electric wiring, everything, I built it. What was nice was also my father and my older son and I were the principal labor on it too. So it was very much a uh, three generation project. Sorry, I'm looking for what in essence looks like a uh, bone folder for you junk journalers. Ah, here it is. But it, it's a burnisher. So now, first, I like to go around and get the very edge. So make sure it's well adhered. You saw me struggle a little bit. And then we fold it over Excuse me, if 
everybody. And I like this iridescent quality of this particular glass. And I think, as you can see, it'll give a nice um, water texture. And then the ripples in it, of course, are clearly water textured. And this piece is going to be three layers of glass. thought of another tool I don't have on hand. So I'm just making sure these corners are all flattened out because if it is lumpy, of course that will translate through to the um, oh, I'll get the word here. Right? The solder, so what will become the drawn line. And also, the thing I need to look for is clearly that got off folded, so I'm gonna have to find my um, number eleven exacto blade and cut that out. But um, you'll need to wait while I look for things. Ah, keeps wanting to come unstuck. Okay, so then the piece just gets slotted back in here and we continue to, we just do this over and over and over again also over the entire piece. So I'm not gonna get this all done today. I have a limited time to work today, but I wanna let you see the start. I'll do some of the time lapse. I'm also gonna let the dog back in the house and um, yeah, thanks for watching. And um, this is the end of the video. I'll show more and I'll come back and talk about it more later. So it's the, <clears throat> excuse me, the long process of wrapping the foil over and over. Sometimes, I don't know if I disappeared a few times to, um, you know, grind it just a little bit more to fit because the foil does um, take up more space. So these little gaps sometimes are a problem. Um, but there's also, when you work with pen and ink, like in the watercolors and such, there's a phrase called line quality. And you're referring to, you know, it's, I think it's very boring in a drawing if all the lines are the same thickness, the same weight. You know, if you push harder on a pencil, it gives a darker line or a charcoal or whatever your marking media is exception of like felt pens, but even then to a certain degree. So you want that sort of thickness, lightness, heaviness, and these lines, because like here it's nice and tight, as it comes down, as it gets a little wider, you get a little very, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little scratchy, get a little um, variation of line, so that you're sort of continuing the same feel as a um, an inked drawing with watercolor 
in many ways, that's what I think of when I think of stained glass, is while I was never a big fan of coloring books, <laughs> you'd think as an artist as a kid, I would have loved coloring books, but I didn't because even then, I would rather make my own lines to color in. And I just felt like, well, what if I don't like your drawing? What if I don't want to put the colors there? What if I think they should blend? So coloring books are never a big thrill, but sorry, I digressed. The, um, so I'd look at stained glass as kind of like, I've drawn the lines, the glass edge, and now I'm laying this in. And then I'm laying in areas of color, in this case, the stained glass. So in one way, they're very, very similar to the watercolors in terms of line and area of colors. But <laughs> in another very real way, they couldn't be more different than the watercolors. For one is, you know, they're rigid. They take pre a lot of pre-planning, a lot of very, um, well, others are much more exacting than I am. Um, it's just not in my nature. But, um, and these take so much longer. And to that end, to the, the length of that time, I'm not going to shoot a um, time-lapse video of the whole process. So I'm going to go ahead and um, end this shortly. And so I will let you know <clears throat> that I will continue to post as I work on the various steps of this piece. It will be a long process because there's three of these panels and then, you know, all the soldering and all that kind of stuff, the patina. And then we set the glass part aside and start building the frame and the light box issues and then the um, sculptural elements. So it's quite a um, long process for this piece. And it's sort of, so if you're looking at all the different things I do on these videos, you will see I have the very, very quick watercolor pieces and like on a day of the Tour de France I may paint as many as 10 watercolors in a single day and then we have the paint stick paintings like the one that I just finished like two videos ago called in our own little world and while that one I started in June and finished in October it wasn't working time, it was that other projects got in the way. So, but those paintings can take mm, a weekish of painting time. And then there's this, which, well, this panel will probably take me two or three weeks. So you figure six weeks for all of the panels and then another week or so for the sculpture elements and painting them and fitting it all together and wiring it. So this one piece will take two or three months. So, and I like that. I used to only do the paint stick paintings and it was it was an easy answer when people say, well, what do you do? And I could say, well, I do this. Now, I do a lot of different media because each idea needs to be expressed differently. So, I don't know if you can see it, but see how the right here the foil doesn't align? And of course, the same thing happens on the reverse because it's wrapped. So I'm going to take... Normally, I can't find my number 11 blade, so this is one of those little slide-out blades. And then I just cut away, get that line to be clear. Again, back to quality of line, I don't want a weird start-stop. 
So that now that's a more continuous line. And we'll flip it over. Now with these pieces, like stained glass that goes in the window or like a glass, you know, a dream catcher kind of thing, you can see both sides. And I've done like Christmas ornaments in the past. But in this case, you'll never see the back side of the glass, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be right. Just now I don't know. Here we go. And so that one fits in real nice, and then we'll just go on. So, again, I will be posting more videos as I work on this. And um, if you want to see those when they pop up, please be sure to subscribe. Give a thumbs up if you like what you see. If you don't like what you see and you've stuck it out this long, good on you. But if you would like to give a thumbs down, I'm, I'm a big boy. I can take that. Um, and of course, I would love to know what you think of the piece, of the process. You can criticize my process if you like. I'd love to get into a conversation. I'm relatively new to this media, so input is always um, appreciated. And you can find, find all of my artwork at the art at gregleach.com. Okay, how did this come in there? There's only so many options. Okay. Um, gregleach.com. If you like the cycling stuff, you can read the blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. But I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And it'll probably be another week before I get another video up. So I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you're in the uh, Northern Virginia area, I have a show opening this Thursday, October 20th. That'll include stained glass and paintings. It's at Cayo Gallery in Old Town Alexandria. And uh, I'll post their website in the comments. And that show, so if, you know, it depends on when you see this, of course. This, you may have missed the Thursday opening, but the show will be up well into December of 2022. And uh, I'd love it if you could check it out. If you do, leave a comment here too. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate you watching. And uh, I love sharing this, my process with you. Thank you. We'll see you in about a week probably after the show. There will also be a video about the um, exhibition itself. So that will probably be the next thing I post before I come back to uh, this piece. Thank you.